Welcome to St. John's Lutheran Church, Springfield, Ohio. Today is Sunday, January 6, 2019. Today is the Epiphany of Our Lord. St. John's is located at 27 North Wittenberg Avenue, Springfield, Ohio. Our telephone number is 937-323-7506. Our pastor is the Reverend John H. Pollock. Our organist is Greg Nolte. Our choir director is Vicki Perks. St. John's has a outreach store open 9.30 to 1, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday, closed on Thursday. We have a food pantry open on Wednesday from 9 to 10.45. We have a rainbow table on Friday. They serve food from noon to 1 o'clock. Everyone is welcome. Good morning. And welcome to our worship service this morning as we celebrate the Feast of the Epiphany. Uh, in so doing, we have a little change in our normal liturgy for this morning. Uh, we will begin with the order of confession and forgiveness as always, then the opening hymn. Then after the apostolic reading, which is printed in your bulletin, we will then sing verses 1 and 5 of We Three Kings, which is on the back of your bulletin. Then go to the prayer of the day. Uh, also, um, the hymn, uh, As the Gladness Men of Old, will not be sung. That's where the choir anthem will go. And then you notice after the sermon, we will not be using the Nicene Creed, but singing as a confession, uh, the What Child Is This? Uh, afterwards, then the liturgy follows its normal route. I understand the last week you got out in 35 minutes, so uh, you're going to make up for it today. I, I, I understand the uh, supply preached for four minutes, so I guess that gives me an extra 16 minutes today to add on to my normal 20, so if you can't let it go by. And we went to uh, Mass with our grandkids and oldest son and daughter-in-law, and Father Mims preached 12 minutes. <laughs> He's a Catholic priest. I've never heard of a Lutheran preaching four minutes. <laughs> That's just part of my mind. Let us begin, as always, with the, or as usual, with the order of confession and forgiveness on page 94 in the front of your worship book. I invite those who can do so without difficulty to please stand. So that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways 
Lead us now by faith to know your presence in our lives and bring us at last to the full vision of your glory through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Gina Pollock will be doing the readings. Demetrov will do the song. Of God's grace that was given me by the working of his power. 
although I am the very least of all the saints. This grace was given to me to bring to the Gentile the news of the boundless riches of Christ and to make everyone see what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things so that through the church the wisdom of God in its rich variety might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was in the accordance with the eternal purpose that has carried out in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have access to God, in boldness and confidence through faith in Him. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Today we celebrate the festival of Epiphany. For our Orthodox brothers and sisters in Christ, this is their Christmas celebration. Epiphany comes to us from a Greek word which means to show something or to reveal it or to manifest it. So as we celebrate the Epiphany, we are celebrating the fact that through Jesus Christ, God has shown us his true attitude towards us. He has revealed to us his great love for us. And he has, in the purpose of Jesus, given us a complete picture of what we need to know about God while we are on this side of heaven. Uh, and so we are celebrating uh, basically what we celebrated at Christmas, the Incarnation. God taking on human flesh and being among us. It also celebrates the fact that Jesus is the light of the world. And that Jesus is the light that came into the darkness of sin and rebellion against God. So that we can know that God loves us, wants to forgive us, and wants us to be his own and live under him in his kingdom. Jesus not only is the light of the world, he is the hope of the world. And he is the revealer of the world. He reveals God to us. Jesus brings his light into the things that are hidden in darkness. And this light of his discloses the purposes of the heart. So it is by his light that we see the hearts of the magic. Trusting and truthful open and overflowing. So it is by his light that we see the heart of Herod, devious and doubtful, hard and hateful. So it is by his light that we see the hearts of the high priests and the religious leaders of the day, hearts that are skeptical and indifferent. From these three groups, the Magi, Herod, and the high priest and religious leaders, we learn about the reactions that humans still have today towards Jesus Christ that are no different than the reactions of Herod, the high priest and religious leaders, and the Magi. So we begin with Herod. In verse Three, St. Matthew tells us that Herod was frightened, I believe, is the way they interpret it in your reading. In the ESV, they use the word trouble. The word frightened or troubled it means to be stirred up or to have something stir up something in you, some outside influence. It means to be agitated or to agitate someone. It means to have fear of something. And it means to be perplexed. Herod was full of fear. He was agitated. He was stirred up. He was perplexed about this news that a baby had been born who, would be, who was to be the king of the Jews. He, Herod was afraid of a potential rival to his throne, even though he would be long gone by the time his baby came of age to reign. Because of his great agitation, his great fear, his trouble, and his perplexity, he issues the horrible decree to slaughter all males two years of age and under what we know as the slaughter of the innocents. But that was Herod. Herod was always afraid that someone was trying to overthrow him. He was so paranoid, he killed his favorite wife, several of his sons. He killed prominent members of the society in Jerusalem, and one year wiped out the entire Sanhedrin. 70 Jewish leaders, religious leaders, because he feared they were plotting against him. The Jews hated him because
21, a descendant of David. He was from Edom. He was an Edomite, a country that King David had conquered and put under the rule of Israel. How he got the job as king of Judea is that when Rome invaded the Middle East, Herod sided with the Romans. And so the Roman Senate in 40 BC, to show their appreciation for his being an ally, made him king of Judea. Of course, as I said, the Jews hated this because he wasn't legitimate. He wasn't a descendant of David. Only a descendant of David was to be king. But Herod tried to win their favor by following the Jewish ritual and the Jewish laws. In fact, he did so so strictly that Caesar Augustus is quoted as having said, quote, I would rather be Caesar's pig, or I would rather be Herod's pig than Herod's son. The reason being, trying to be a devout Jew, Herod didn't mess with pigs. They were forbidden to eat. They were unclean animals. So pigs in his kingdom were fine, but don't be a son, because he could very well end up dead. And so it was not surprising that he would call for the slaughter of the innocents to make sure he wiped out this future king. Many people today are troubled and perplexed by Jesus Christ. They too see him as a rival. Not as a rival to the throne because there are very few monarchies today, so there's not that many thrones that have to be worried about. But they are troubled and worried about Jesus as a rival to their way of living, their way of prioritizing, their way of thinking of what is important. They realize what the Lordship of Christ really means for their life and their values. They hear the challenge of discipleship. They hear the challenge of taking up your cross and following him. And they're not sure they want to give up their world-centered beliefs and actions to make a commitment to Jesus. They hear the church talk about forgiveness, and that's appealing to them because that wipes their conscience clean. And they are intrigued by the idea of eternal life. But still they have qualms about Jesus. Part of these qualms, part of this perplexity, part of this fear of making a commitment to Jesus is because they have received inaccurate information about Jesus. They listen to some cult leader or some nut who has taken the gospel and twisted it, and they think that's what it is to be a follower of Jesus. So they're troubled by it. The certain things are appealing, but they just don't want to give up those worldly values worldly actions and that submitting to the desires of the flesh all the time. They want that instant gratification. The Spanish explorer Cortez debarked, disembarked with 500 soldiers on the east coast of Mexico. As the last bit of supplies were brought on shore, Cortez ordered the ships to be burned. The soldiers stood on the beach watching their only means of returning home going up in flames. As they watched the flames devour their ships, they knew they were committing everything, even their lives, to the cause of conquering a new world for Spain. So it is with following Jesus Christ. When we follow Jesus Christ, we burn the ships of greed, we burn our ships of self-centeredness. We burn our ships of self-indulgence. We burn our ships of envy. We burn our ships of jealousy. We burn our ships of materialism. And we board the ship of the church, which sails us through this earthly life into the glorious, everlasting kingdom of heaven. Yet, there are those like Herod who are troubled and afraid of making that change, of giving up their power 
into the hands of Jesus Christ. And so they were troubled. The second reaction to Jesus is that of indifference demonstrated by the high priest and the religious leaders who are asked to answer the question of the Magi, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? The amazing thing is that as they gathered together after being summoned by Herod, they give the correct answer. That the child is in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophets. They give the right answer. But amazingly, they refuse to do anything. They refuse to be involved in the entire command. You would think that after almost a 500 year period of silence from God, no new prophets had come up since the return from Babylon. You would think that these scholars and religious leaders would be thrilled and overjoyed to realize they could witness the fulfillment of all those Old Testament prophecies. But instead, they do nothing. They react as if this is just another day. Maybe they thought, well, he's just born, there's nothing to get excited about, we'll get excited when he grows up and sees what he can do. Or maybe it's because they had lost sight of the true prophecies about the Messiah and expected him to burst on the scene as an adult, as some type of warrior king like Alexander the Great who would conquer the world and impose Judaism on the world and its values as Alexander the Great had imposed Greek culture and language on the world that he conquered. But what, for whatever reason, they were indifferent. And many people reacted differently today to the birth of Jesus Christ. For many Americans today, the celebration of Christmas is a priceless celebration. They have no interest in finding out what Christmas is really all about and why it is celebrated. They can care less about the realization of the angel's message, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. I don't know what they're expecting. But they're missing out. For you, you see, it doesn't matter how many times, how many Santa Claus movies you watch. It doesn't matter how many times you watch Christmas with the Cranks. It doesn't matter how many times you watch Claymation Christmas. It doesn't matter how many times you watch Otter's Jug Band Christmas. It doesn't matter how many times you sing Jingle Bells up on the house top. House top, reindeer's paws, chestnuts roasting on an open fire. We will build a snowman, we'll name him Father Brown. He'll ask us if we're married, we'll say, No man, but you can do the job when you're in town. No matter how many times you sing, baby, it's cold outside. That's not Christmas. That is paganism, secularism, humanism. Whatever you want to call it, it's not Christmas. Christmas, Christ matters. Christmas is about the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, God coming down in human form to save the world. It has nothing to do with Rudolph and Frosty the Snowman and the Grinch and all those silly, ridiculous, secular songs about wintertime. It is O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. It is Come, O Ye Faithful. It is joy to the world. It is what child is this? It is son of God. It is joy to the world. We as the church must reclaim our one of our most holiest of days. The birth of our Lord. And stop letting retail and merchants turn it into a 
selling the napkin for themselves and totally losing out on this tree. While well, we were on vacation when we got to Griffin, our oldest son, daughter-in-law, took us around to see some of the Christmas decorations. And you would go by some houses and they would have beautiful lights and the center would be a nativity scene and there would be angels and there would be a star in the garage or the point of, on the peak of the porch or, or somewhere. And you go by their houses and there would be a big inflatable of Frosty the Snowman, Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer, the Grinch, Santa, not a star, not an angel, not a nativity scene. Nothing but secularism. Because people are indifferent to what Christmas is all about. As I said, I don't know what they're expecting. I don't know if they think that when Jesus returns, he's going to announce a grace period where all of these people who celebrated a priceless Christmas can now suddenly accept God's most wonderful gift he gave at Christmas and enter into heaven. Or maybe they think because the church says God is love and Jesus loves everybody, that Jesus is going to just issue a blanket pardon and let everybody into heaven. Well, I hate to tell them, but when Jesus returns, it's all over. It's too late. As Jesus said, when he comes again, it'll be like a shepherd separating the sheep from the goats. To the sheep, he will say, welcome into my kingdom good and faithful servant, come to the place prepared for you since the beginning of time. And to the goats, he will say, depart from me, you evildoers, and go into the place prepared for you and Satan and the fallen angels since the beginning of time. They have to quit being indifferent. If they're going to celebrate Christmas, they need to celebrate what it's all about. Because otherwise, why are they celebrating? Just so they can exchange gifts with one another. Just so they have an excuse to have a party and drink and eat. Indifference will lead to eternal damnation. In a small village in Europe, the pastor summoned the townspeople to the village square. Once everyone was gathered, the pastor said, quote, I wish to announce that there is a God in the world. End of quote. That's all he said. He turned around and then walked back to the church. But the people of his parish understood what he said completely. They had been acting as if God did not exist. While they still observed all the ritual of the church, even though they still prayed and recited the correct prayers at the correct time, their actions did not comply with followers of Jesus Christ or the commandments of God. They sought their daily bread and it was taken without little thought or reverence for God. The high priests and the other religious leaders were indifferent to the Messiah being born just five miles down the road. Let us pray that we never become indifferent to our faith in the true meaning of Christmas. Which brings us to the third reaction. Here come the Magi. From the Magi we learn the proper way to react to the birth of Jesus Christ. And that reaction is to worship. As St. Matthew tells us in verse 11 of our Gospel lesson today, quote, And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. End of quote. The phrase to fall down. It means to prostrate oneself in homage to somebody else. Common uh, action in the Middle East, in the further east you go, that People would prostrate themselves before a king or ruler or whatever. Also, it has the imagery of a dog licking their master's hand. For those of us who have dogs or have had dogs, we know that 
if we are treating our dog right and our dog is our best friend, it can't wait to lick our hand and lick our face to show its appreciation for our love and care. So basically, St. Matthew is saying, the Magi were so overjoyed and overwhelmed with seeing the birth of the King of Kings, seeing him there with his mother Mary, that they fell down and prostrated themselves before him and were like kissing him like a dog licking your hand. That is how overwhelmed. Then the Magi opened their gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh, teaching us that those who truly believe in Jesus Christ respond to Christmas with praise and thanksgiving. For those who truly understand the meaning of Christmas, we sing the songs meaningfully, not like we are just going through the motions. We don't sing the Christmas carols because we don't want somebody punching their neighbor and saying, look, John's not singing. No, we sing them meaningfully because they have meaning to us. Hark the herald angels sing. Glory to the newborn king. We believe in those words. We confess those words. We cling to those words. When we truly understand the meaning of Christmas, we pray thankfully, being truly thankful for what God has given us in the gift of His Son, Jesus Christ. We offer our gifts generously, our hearts filled with thanks for all that God has done, not our hearts filled with resentment. Or a feeling of, well, I have to do this. But giving joyfully and gladly. Because no matter what we give, we can never equal the gift that God has given us in Jesus Christ. And when we truly understand Christmas, we will worship heartily. With heart, mind, and soul. The Feast of Epiphany shows us three reactions to the birth of Jesus. A reaction of being troubled as demonstrated by Herod. The reaction of indifference as demonstrated by the high priest and religious leaders. And the reaction of worship, praise, and thanksgiving demonstrated by the magic. What is your reaction? Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and mouths be Christ Jesus. Now would you turn to hymn number 296 as we see all verses of what child is this in the back of your worship. Hymn number 296.
Time for our offering. Our ushers today are Sharon Leach and Gina Pollock.
bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts that we might make to the world signs of your gracious presence. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. St. John practices an open communion for all those who are baptized and believe in Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, who believe his body and blood are truly present as we gather at this table, and our communion age in their own individual congregation. We are invited and encouraged to come forward with us this day as we gather at the table of Lord. We continue our celebration with the great thanksgiving on page 152 in the front of your worship. The Lord be with you.
by the Lord Jesus Christ and his precious blood strength and preserve you in true faith and the life eternal. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, we give you thanks that you have set before us this feast, the body and blood of your Son. By your Spirit, strengthen us to serve all in need and to give ourselves away as bread for the hungry through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. We can clear a celebration with brightest and best of the stars, hymn number 303 in the back of your worship. Hymn number 303. <coughs> our 1030 service. Join us next Sunday at 8 o'clock or 1030. Uh, we have a midweek Wednesday service at 630 in the chapel. 
Again, St. John's is located at 27 North Wittenberg Avenue, Springfield, Ohio. Our telephone number is 937-323-7508.